Hello, welcome to Mr. Academia YouTube channel. Uh, remember to press that subscription button, like our lessons, share, and also comment on our lessons to enjoy the best out of our lessons. I will also remind you that to do offer online lessons and you can just contact us. Uh, we shall provide you a Zoom link whereby uh, we shall be able to provide to you a lesson in any topic and any subject that you wish. Uh, we do offer mathematics, chemistry, and physics. Uh, in our today's lesson, uh, we are basically going to continue with our series of waves. And today, we are basically going to look at stationary waves, or what we sometimes call standing waves. Uh, uh, if you look at what a stationary wave is, uh, a stationary wave uh, is a wave that is formed as a result of superposition. Uh, so this word superposition here is very important of two progressive waves of equal amplitude frequency uh, should also be the same, but the two waves should be traveling at the same speed and in the opposite direction. So in the previous episode, we looked at what a progressive wave is and we said progressive waves, uh, the waves which are in motion from the source to the surrounding places and they transfer energy. And some of the examples of progressive waves that we looked at was water waves and electromagnetic waves. So if two progressive waves super superpose, I uh, mean, uh, if they have the same amplitude and frequency and also traveling at the same speed, but in opposite direction. So what they form is what we call a stationary wave or what you can call a standing wave. So stationary waves for them, uh, they don't transfer energy as they move from one place to another. They don't move along with the wave or energy does not move along with the wave. Uh, so they are characterized by nodes and what we call anti-nodes. So nodes we shall be using a letter N for nodes and a capital A for anti-nodes. So if you look at how stationary waves are formed, uh, we, we end up seeing that stationary waves are formed when two waves, uh, which are probably progressive waves of equal frequency and equal amplitude traveling at the same speed and in opposite direction when those two waves are superposed to another to themselves they result into a formation of, of nodes and what we call antinodes so so at antinodes uh, or what we call an antinode this is a position where waves meet in phase and the amplitude is always maximum at the antinodes then at the nodes the wave meet out of phase or what we call antiphase and the amplitude is always maximum so remember amplitude is the displacement from the mean position so amplitude is minimum at the node and it is maximum at what we call the antinodes so if you look at the conditions which are, which should be fulfilled for us to form stationary waves, uh, one, the waves must be traveling in, this, in the opposite direction uh, for, for on top of these other eco frequency amplitude being the same and then same speed, they must also be traveling in opposite direction and then they must have the same speed, same frequency and also the amplitude of the two waves should be the same such that when, the, when, when all these conditions are fulfilled and the waves propose, they end up forming what we call stationary waves. Uh, if you look at the equation of a stationary wave, I remember the equation of a stationary wave always results uh, from the conditions that we've seen for those two waves traveling in opposite directions if they superpose. So if we consider a wave traveling to the right, last time we looked at how a wave traveling to the right, how it is represented, uh, the displacement of any particle of the medium at any time t is given by this equation. So the minus sign here shows that this wave is traveling to the right. So when this wave is reflected, of course it travels to the left and the displacement of any particle in the medium will be given by this equation. So the difference between this and this uh, actually, this one here should be y2, which is traveling to the left, and it is characterized by this plus sign here, which shows it is traveling to the left. And the one to the right has a minus sign here. So when these two waves superpose, so it means the two waves now combine when they're moving in opposite direction. This one is moving to the right, whereas this other one is moving 
to the left. So when they superpose, it means the two waves are combining. So we shall end up having, uh, they'll form a general equation given by y equals y1 plus y2. So remember, we are adding two sine equations. And, and if you are adding two sine equations, uh, what we do is that we take, we take, uh, let's say, if the first equation is y is equal to s sine omega, actually this is the first and this is the second equation. So if we add the two, uh, we shall end up having y uh, equals s sine omega t minus phi plus s sine omega t plus phi. So when adding these two, uh, to get the answer, we are going to use trigonometrical identities for addition of two sine functions, where the result will be two will be two sine semi-sum cos semi-difference. So in this case, meaning that here, you can even first factorize out the A, such that in brackets, we end up having sine of omega t plus phi, uh, which is uh, which is being added to, uh, this is a general big bracket, which is being added to sine of omega t, sine omega t minus phi, uh, so when we add this, uh, the what is in bracket here, when we're adding it, uh, we end up taking two sine semi-sum. So the two sine semi-sum, meaning that uh, you get omega t plus phi, then plus omega t minus phi divided by two, the minus phi will cross, and then you remind with two sine omega t, and then also take the cos semi-difference, meaning that you get omega t minus phi, and then you subtract omega t minus phi. So you end up getting cos, cos of negative, cos of negative phi, but cos of any negative number is similar to cos of a positive number, such that you end up with 2a, to a cos phi sine omega t as an answer, which is the similar answer to this one here. So this equation here is the equation of a stationary wave. So the equation of a stationary wave is given by this one here. So remember the equation of a wave always varies with time. So meaning that this first part here, this one is equivalent to the amplitude of a wave. I uh, remember the equation of the wave, the general is given by A sine omega t, or it's a function of time. So meaning that this other part here, which is the 2A cos phi, is, this, is the amplitude of the stationary wave. So the amplitude of the stationary wave, A, is given by amplitude is equivalent to 2A cos cosine of phi. That is the amplitude of a stationary wave. So this, since since phi is a function, is a function of x, or it varies with displacement, and phi is always given by two pi x, two pi x divided by wavelength, which we call lambda. So it means that the amplitude of a stationary or a stationary wave is not constant since it varies with the distance x. So amplitude is not constant since it varies with the distance, which is which is x. Uh, so that is how we find the amplitude of a stationary wave, and that is how we also find the equation of a stationary wave. So if we look at the principle of superposition of waves, uh, the that principle of superposition of waves, it says that when two waves are traveling in the same region, Two waves it says that for two waves traveling in the same region, the total displacement of at any point is equal to the vector sum of their displacement at that point when the two waves overlap. So this one here is what you call the principle or superposition of waves. So if you look at an example uh, whereby we are applying the principle of superposition and the idea of stationary waves or standing waves. Uh, we are given a plane where a plane progressive wave is given by y equals this, where x and y are in millimeters. Take note of this millimeters because at some point you may be required to use standard units which are meters, and t is in seconds. Read the equation of the progressive wave, which would give rise to a stationary wave if if superimposed on the above. Uh, so for part A, remember for superposition, we should have two waves which have the same amplitude, same frequency, and same speed, but traveling in the same, uh, sorry, traveling in opposite direction. So if you look at this, this wave here, 
is struggling to the right. So meaning that if we are to have, if we are to form a stationary wave, then we should have, this wave here should super, superpose with another wave which is traveling in the opposite direction. That means that that wave should be traveling to the left. So to get the equation of the wave traveling to the left, we just change the sign. The sign here is what we change. So that wave will be given by, uh, by this equation here. Uh, you can see we've just changed the sign. Remember the first wave Y1 was given by A sine uh, 100 pi T, A sine 100 pi T minus 10 out of nine pi X. So this wave here, was traveling to the right. So for this, for us to form a stationary wave, we get the one traveling to the left, which is given by this equation, which we get by changing the sign here. So if, if part two says find the equation of the stationary wave and hence determine its amplitude of vibration. So we now uh, aim at finding the equation of the stationary wave, which is got by adding these two waves. We add y1 and y2. So if if we add a y1 and y2, of course, we shall follow the same steps. So this equation will be given by our y is this plus this. Uh, so of course, we shall use uh, two, two, uh, two sine, uh, sine semi-sum cause semi-difference. So meaning that uh, when you add these two, uh, you shall take sine, then you add these two and divide by two. Well, this will lose such that you remain with 100 pi t uh, plus 100 pi t divided by 2. So you have sine 100 pi t, then cos semi difference, whereby these two will subtract. Um, and then you have cos of a negative, cos cos of a negative is similar to cos of a positive, such that this is cos 10 out of 9 pi x. So that implies that this one here, that implies that this one here is the amplitude of a wave. This is the amplitude of the wave. So the amplitude A uh, is given by 2A cos, uh, cos 10 out of 9 pi x. So this one here is the amplitude of the wave. Um, then determine the frequency and velocity of the stationary wave. So of course, when determining the frequency and velocity, uh, you just need to do comparisons Remember the general equation of a wave is given by y equals a sine sine omega t. And remember, if we compare this with this, uh, we already saw what the amplitude is. So that means that omega t uh, is similar to 100 pi, 100 pi t. So that means that omega is equivalent to 100 pi. And remember, omega is given by two pi f. Omega is given by two pi f. So that means that two pi f equals 100 pi. So you can use this to find the frequency of the wave. And then after getting the frequency of the wave, you can go ahead and find the velocity uh, using the appropriate formula for finding uh, the velocity of the wave. Uh, so the velocity, uh, you realize that the velocity here is zero. Of course, the wave is stationary, so the velocity is zero meters per second. So if you look at the differences between stationary and progressive waves, since we looked at the uh, progressive waves, uh, for stationary waves, the amplitude of the particles in the medium varies with position along the wave. So amplitude varies with position, whereas for progressive waves, all particles in the transmitting medium, they oscillate with the same amplitude. So progressive waves, amplitude is the same, whereas for stationary waves, amplitude varies with position of the wave. Then stationary waves, <clears throat> Uh, they don't transfer energy, whereas progressive waves for them, they transfer energy as they move from one point to another. Then for stationary waves, the distance between any two successive nodes or antinodes is equivalent to lambda over two. Whereas for progressive waves, uh, the distance between any two successive crests and troughs is given by lambda. Or, uh, or what you call one wavelength, whereas here the distance is half the wavelength. Then uh, stationary waves are characterized by nodes and antinodes, whereas progressive waves for them, they are not characterized by nodes 
and antinode. So those are the differences between stationary waves and progressive waves. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel, uh, share, and also comment on our lessons to enjoy the best. Uh, uh, we'll stop here for today's episode. We'll meet again for the next episode about waves. Thank you.